Wow, it's so beautiful. What is it, Jimmy? Jimmy? Oh, don't worry. He must be playing with a fly or something. Shut up, Jimmy. Huh? What is it, Jimmy? What's over there? He must be playing with you, Lucy. All right, all right. I'll come with you. Are you coming, George? No, no. He's playing with you. You go ahead and take a look. I'm just going to lie down here. Hey, Jimmy, stop. What's in here? Huh? It's a kitten. She's so cute. You look so tired. Didn't you eat, you poor little thing? Where's your mother? It seems she's lost. Let me call Matthew and George. George, Matthew, come over here. Huh? Isn't that Lucy? Matthew, Matthew, stand up. George, Matthew. Huh? It's Lucy. Why is she calling us? Come on, Matthew. Let's go. She could be in some trouble. Huh? Coming, Lucy! <sighs> what happened, Lucy? Hey, guys, look what I found. Wow, she is... She is so beautiful. Isn't she? I found her in these bushes. She is alone and I couldn't find her mother anywhere. She looks so weak. Maybe her mother has gone out to fetch some food. Can I hold her, Lucy, please? Mm, all right, here. Come here. Oh, you poor thing. Are you hungry? Where is your mama? Hello, kids. Father John. What's going on here? We found a kitten by the bush, Father. We are waiting for her mother to come back. This one looks so weak. I don't think she has eaten anything in days. George, go and get some milk. Quick. Yes, Father. Hmm. Let's wait for her mother to come back till evening. And what if something happened to her mother? What if she doesn't come back? Then we will take care of her, Matthew. Don't worry. I've got the milk. Very good. Now keep it down there. All right, let's sit here for some time. Father, can you tell us a story while we wait here for his mother? That's a great idea, Lucy. Now which story do you want me to tell you? You told us yesterday that you tell us the story of Prophet Jeremiah today. Ah, yes. Now listen carefully. In the little village of Anathoth, not very far from Jerusalem, a boy named Jeremiah was learning his lessons. Since Jeremiah was the son of a priest, he had more difficult lessons to learn and less time to play. But Jeremiah was quick to learn. He knew all about the history of Israel and how God had helped by leading them. As Jeremiah grew, he became bigger and stronger. His heart was filled with the love for his country and with the love of God. One day, as he was walking in his fields, Jeremiah, huh? I'm going to bind you as the prophet of the nations. Huh? But Lord God, I'm too young. I do not know how to speak. Do not say that you are too young. You must go where I send you 
and say what I command you. I'm putting my words in your mouth. I will, Lord. Jeremiah, what do you see? I, I see a branch of an almond tree, and I see a cooking pot tilting from the north. In his vision, like the white flowers in the almond tree that was awake while everything else was dead, God said that he would fulfill every one of his words. Jeremiah, I watch over my words to see it fulfilled. And like the tilting pot, disaster is boiling from the north to destroy your land. Huh? Do not be afraid. I will make you strong. You will be like a fortified city. God told Jeremiah that evil days were coming upon his country. He told him that armies would come sweeping down from the north and would destroy Jerusalem and take the Israelites captive. This was the message which Jeremiah was supposed to deliver to the people. The message that God was about to punish the Israelites for their wrongdoings. And no better messenger could have been chosen. Jeremiah was quite fearless and steadfast like a rock. Nothing could stop him or tempt him to keep silence. Listen, O Israel, to the word of God. You have abandoned our God. Your prophet speaks in the name of idols. Your priests offer sacrifices to these idols. Your hands are stained with the blood of the innocent. Isn't this Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, the priest? Ah, yes, he is. Where was he all these days? Looks like he's sick. He is pretending to be a prophet. A prophet? No, not another one. We have enough of them already. Come back to God. He is merciful. Abandon your idols and do justice. Jeremiah, you better watch what you're saying. Are you trying to be a prophet? Jeremiah, my son, why don't you be a priest like your father? What you're doing is quite dangerous. I am only obeying our God, and I think you should do the same. Hmm. At first, however, things were easy for the young prophet. The good king Josiah was reigning, and he tried to make the people give up idol worship. King Josiah gave instructions to destroy the idols in the country. Altars and temples dedicated to idols were destroyed. From now on, Israel will have only one temple. Sacrifices will be offered only in Jerusalem. Idol worship will now be considered a crime deserving capital punishment. Hmm. Josiah is a smart king. We are becoming an empire like in the times of David. It won't be long before Solomon's glory returns to Israel. Yes, all the prophets are saying the same too. No, not every prophet agrees. Jeremiah is still preaching about the coming disaster. <laughs> he is a fool! But the good days didn't last for long. In a few days, there was a war at Megiddo against Egyptians, and Josiah died fighting a furious battle. Oh no! He was such a good king! Yes, he took care of his people very well. Hmm, maybe, maybe he was punished by the Egyptian gods for destroying their idols. What? Hmm, you're right. Maybe we should worship Baal from now on. Hey, look! Isn't that Jeremiah walking up the stairs? Yes, it's Jeremiah. What is he going to do? People of Israel! God is punishing you for your sins! But Josiah was a good king! He destroyed all the idols! True faith means not just destroying the idols. It means writing the laws of the covenant in your heart. But, but we offer sacrifices as commanded by the God. Your sacrifices are in vain. No one will be able to save you. Move! Mm, move aside! 
People of Israel, do not believe in empty promises. Who are you? How dare you speak like that in the house of the Lord? Yes, this is the house of the Lord. God will protect his house. You steal, murder, and commit other crimes. Then come to the house of the Lord. Do you think you will be safe here? What is this place? A den of robbers? Huh? How dare you? Where are the gods? Yes, master. Arrest this man. He's speaking against our temple and our God. Take him away. Come with me, you. Jeremiah was arrested that day and he was produced before the judges. The judges sent him away with an order forbidding him to enter the temple ever. Jeremiah left the city that day and lived in exile for many years. In the meantime, Israel was attacked by King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. Israel became the servant of Babylon and they were forced to pay heavy taxes. Even Jeremiah, he was exiled. He continued to write his message which he could no longer cry out loud. Write this Baruch. It is not truth, but it's hypocrisy going in Israel. Corruption is increasing day by day and the people have forgotten their Lord. Master, are these the words of the Lord? Mm. Yes, unfortunately, yes. His words are so terrible. Will the people accept his message? I don't know, Baruch. I hope they listen to his message. Huh? You have written down everything the Lord has told me. Tomorrow's the day of fasting. Since I'm not allowed to enter the temple, you must go and read the scroll before all people. But Master, they will arrest me if I read this before them. Don't worry, my son. The Lord will protect you. I... I... All right, Master. I will do as you have told. As Jeremiah had instructed, Baruch went to the temple next day and read the message from God to all the people. And the priests have become true. I will not accept any sacrifices from you. Your nation will be destroyed. Huh? No, it can't be true. But before Baruch could finish reading from the scroll, the officials of the king came and arrested him. Your people will become slaves. And you... Baruch, stop it. You must come with me to the king. Huh? God, take the scroll with him. Baruch was taken to the king, and the priest read out the message from the scroll. And because of this, your city will be destroyed. Huh? Your temple will be destroyed. Your people will become slaves again. What? How dare he? Give me that scroll. Here, my lord. Ugh. Oh, oh. Word of God, huh? Ugh. Oh. Arrest him and send him to the prison. I'll show him who the real God is. Ugh. Oh. No. No. Please. Baruch was arrested that day and the king gave strict orders prohibiting Jeremiah to enter the city. Jeremiah, in the meantime, received another message from God. He went to the valley of Ben-Hinnom and carried a jar along with him. This is the valley where you sacrificed innocent babies to idols. This place will hereafter be called as the valley of slaughter. Huh? Oh no! Father, is it true? Is the God going to punish us? But there among the crowd was Pashur, the chief priest. He got infuriated by Jeremiah's words and he went upon him and struck him. I will put an end to your prophecies today. Here! Ah! Uh, gods! Take him to the palace! 
Jeremiah was taken to the palace and was beaten the whole night. Ugh! Ugh! Ah! You, you and your friends will become slaves to the king of Babylon. Jerusalem will be reduced to ashes. Ah! ah. Ha! You are a fool! And after a few days, Jeremiah got another message from God. Jeremiah, make a yoke of wood, put it on your neck, and go to the king, Zerekiah. Yes, my lord. God told Jeremiah that the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, was his loyal servant. He was using the king to destroy Israel and its people. Jeremiah was upset hearing the news and he decided to go and deliver the message anyways. The next day there was a meeting at the palace. King Zedekiah had invited neighboring countries to unite and fight against Nebuchadnezzar. We must unite and fight against Babylon. Yes, Babylon will fall if stand together. Wait, who is that? Isn't that Jeremiah, the prophet? <sighs> what are you doing? How dare you enter the palace? I... I came here to deliver the word of God. I have handed over all your countries to my servant, Nebuchadnezzar. If you refuse to obey him and bend to his yoke, then your kingdom will be destroyed. How dare you! We are going to break the yoke of Babylon like this! Ha! Huh. You broke the wooden yoke. The Lord will place an iron yoke over your shoulder and you will die in a foreign land. Wait! I think we must listen to him! No, my king! He's just a mad person! Look at him. Does he look like a prophet to you? Don't worry. I'm going to take care of him. Guards, arrest him and throw him in the pit. Huh? Nobody believed Jeremiah. They arrested him and threw him in a well in the courtyard. The well was a horrible place. There was not enough water in the well, but there was deep wet mud at the bottom into which he kept sinking. You and your prophecies will end in this well. And they left him there without food to die. Why was I ever born? Why should I live at all like this? Hated and despised by everyone. Lord, your word was my delight. It was sweet as honey and I proclaimed it with joy. Why is it that you have abandoned me now? Jeremiah. Huh? God? Jeremiah, you speak only noble words. You shall be as my own mouth. That night, Jeremiah, who had sung waist deep, was saved by a servant of the king. Master, master. Huh. Who are you? Shh. Be silent, master. I've come to save you. Tie this rope below your arms. I will lift you up, master. The servant pulled out Jeremiah from the well and saved his life. Thank you, my son. May God bless you. Thank you, Master. We mustn't stay here any longer. Come, let's get out of here. Heeding the advice of priests and his ministers, King Zedekiah stopped paying tribute to Nebuchadnezzar. And as Jeremiah had foretold, in a few days, the Babylonian army attacked the city of Jerusalem. The Babylonian army pulled down the walls of Jerusalem 
and they set fire to the palace and the temples. Everything happened like how Jeremiah had prophesied. They looted the town and took all their valuables. Thousands of people were enslaved and taken to Babylon. They killed King Zedekiah, the ministers and all the priests as well. And one day, Jeremiah, I punished those who broke my covenant. The days are coming when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel. I will write my law in their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Jeremiah was destined to live in utter loneliness. He was always made fun of and he was ill-treated everywhere. He lived long enough to witness the disasters he had predicted. But after his death, people realized that he spoke the truth and that made them repent and return to God. Oh, it's such a sad story. Hmm, I know. But as they say, God works in mysterious ways. Hey, look at him. Looks like he was listening your story too. Ha ha ha. Were you listening to my story, you cutie? Hey, what are we gonna call him? Hmm. He, he growls a lot. Let's call him Lion. No, no. Let's call him Tiger. Ha ha. Tiger. That's a nice name. I liked it too. All right. It's time for the questions. Yes, Father. Hmm. Now, Matthew, answer this. Where was Jeremiah born? Anathoth. Jeremiah was born in the village of Anathoth. Very good, Matthew. Now, who can answer this? What was the first vision that God showed Jeremiah? God showed him a vision of an almond tree covered with white flowers and a cooking pot. And George, what did he mean by these visions? In his vision, like the white flowers in the almond tree that was awake while everything else was dead, God said that he would fulfill every one of his words. And what about the cooking pot? God showed him that like the cooking pot tilting from the north, Israel was waiting to be attacked from the north. Very good, George. That's all for today. Now go home and take care of our new member. Here you go. Thank you, Father. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. Father.